Hi, welcome back to Repairing Lawn Mowers for Profit. Behind me here you'll see I've got a Mountfield S481 PD, which is a power drive petrol lawn mower. I'm going to take a look at servicing the carburetor on this. It's only a couple of years old, the design of this, and this one is actually really brand new. I've literally used this once. But the actual breakdown of taking the carburetor off and servicing on any type of lawnmower, such as this one, is very similar, but I've never actually specifically done one on this S481. So we're going to get started right away. I'm going to show you how to service a carburetor on this Mountfield petrol lawnmower. So just before I start I'll just film around this lawnmower as I said it's a Mountfield S481 power drive PD. There's a few different models of this as well with slightly different engines and stuff and this one's got the side discharge on a mulching plug and the wash port but none of that affects what we're going to do today. This has actually got uh, the WBE170 engine on it as you can see there which is also listed as an ST170 overhead valve engine. 166 cc so if you've got this type of setup and this carburetor under here on your mountfield petrol lawnmower you might want to stick around watch the rest of this video and i'm going to show you exactly how to service that up so this has uh, been sent to me very kindly from mountfield just over a week ago and i've done a, a full playlist of videos on this including a review and you'll see a card in your top right hand corner popping up for all those videos where you can watch that full playlist now so we'll get started i'm going to show you how to strip this down as I said, I've not done one of these before, but they're all very similar. We'll get this cover off here. I'm going to show you how to remove the carburetor and what you'll need to do to service this up if you're having running issues. So the first thing I always recommend doing when you're working on any lawnmower, no matter which repair you're doing, is just removing this spark plug lead as well. So I'm going to take that off and I'm going to move that out of the way. And I've noticed on this mower that this actual lead runs really close to this exhaust. In fact, I'll show you exactly what I mean. When I filmed a review video the other day, I noticed that this actual lead here gets very close inside here to this exhaust this is just a, like an exhaust cover but if anything gets hot I can imagine that this is going to get damaged so when I take this recoil cover off I just need to make sure that this is actually rooted correctly I want to see how much distance there should be between this actual spark plug lead here and this exhaust cover so I'm going to attempt to start by taking this recoil cover off I've had a cheeky little look behind this ticket to see if there's a, a screw that needs to come out of there but I don't see one the only two I see a couple of bolts that go through here one here and one at the other side so I'm going to drop a socket in there and we'll back these two actual bolts out and see if this thing lifts off I'm sure there must be another one somewhere near the front but for anybody who's uh, looking at taking this sticker off there isn't one under there so with the spark plug removed I've got a 10 mil extended socket here I'm just going to put that in there I'm going to back these two parts out and see if we can lift this whole recoil off um, I've been wanting to do this for a while to be honest because I've had this mower about a week I'm quite interested to see what it looks like under the cover with everything off as well so let's undo these two parts and I'll just do everything and film it first hand and I won't kind of skip anything either so as you can see there I've undone that and I still can't get this off so I can only presume that this like clips under here so I'm going to give that a bit of a pull see if we can get that off and this is actually bolted on somewhere and I'm just not sure where so the next guess I've got is this is looks like it's a, a separate cover I'm going to try and pull this separate cover off here you can see how that lifts off that was quite easy to do actually I didn't realize that came off as easy as that and that's great because underneath here you can get to the other bolt what we're saying is is if you take this sticker off you can't actually get to that bolt under there so you take the whole part off if you just take the sticker off you think they want one there you see I hope that makes sense anyway so let's just see if we can get that one off there just get a bit of a better tool on that just to give me a bit of more leverage on there oh, that's coming off there nice so we'll take that off there and hopefully we can get this recoil off and we'll have a good look underneath here just make sure everything is where it's supposed to be so just to explain why I'm taking all this off to get to the carburetor you might be thinking well why is he doing that I like to have a good look round at things while I'm in here and I'll take this air filter box off as well in a minute when I've got my hands free and I'm not holding the camera but I like to be able to take everything off and sometimes I just check all these other parts and because I've not actually seen inside one of these lawnmowers I'm just going to take a few parts off before I get this air filter box off and actually start working on this carb the next thing I've come across is this kind of plastic clip I've not seen this before and there's like a shroud here around this actual flywheel so I'm going to get a flat-headed screwdriver I'm just going to lightly run it in this gap here and just prise it up I don't want to damage anything either so we'll go real careful doing that I'm not sure I can do it with one hand but if I flick that up a little bit like that just being real careful I just want to try and lift that over the top of there like that like you can see 
just really carefully, I can take that off there. You must make sure as well, these little silver parts in here, these sometimes drop out on different lawnmowers and these have stayed in nicely. So we've got that off and you can see exactly what we've got here. So just for my reference really, I just want to show that this doesn't have a micro switch on. Some of the Honda ones have a micro switch on here. And if the switch doesn't work, obviously it won't get spark and the lawnmower won't start. But if I pull this handle here, you can see all there is on there is a brake. And that just clamps itself to the flywheel when the lawnmower wants to stop or start. When it wants to start, obviously it moves away and you let go of the handle. And it clamps it to the flywheel and that's what stops the lawnmower. But there's no micro switch on this S481 from Mountfield. It's just simply a brake setup. The next thing I'm going to do now, I've got my hands free, is remove this air filter box. Two little plastic catches on the top of here. Because this machine's new as well, as I say it's brand new, been sent to me very kindly by Mountfield to review and do some videos on this actual air filter box was really hard to press down on top of there this just moves out of the way as you can see brand new looking air filter we've only used this machine once just to test it and now we can get access to all the parts we need we can take this whole air filter box off we can take the carburetor off as well using a 10 mil socket again it was a 10 mil socket at the top and a 10 mil again which i like i always like the tools to be kind of uniform so using the same thing we can undo these parts here just lightly take this one off here I've actually got myself a little metal parts tray there. You can see that down there. So it's stuck to that look. Um, I like to put all the parts in here as well, just so we don't lose anything. It's the easiest way to do it. You don't want things dropping on the floor and not being able to find things, especially when you're putting this back together. And I've actually run this lawnmower completely out of fuel, so there should only be a little bit left in the bottom of the carburetor. So we'll take that one off as well. And hopefully this air filter box should just pull off. But I'm going to show you a few things before I pull that off that you need to just have a quick look at. Before I pull that off the back of there I'm just going to show you around here because there's always a breather pipe here and that goes to the back of the air filter box as well and everything else really should be loose from the cab so just make sure you take note that there's an actual breather pipe here and this box hopefully should just push off. don't think there's any more bolts in that so let's just give that a little bit of a push just see if this actually pops off like that which it has. So we've got that out of the way once again very obviously nice and clean as well so we've got that out of the way i'm just uh, taking a couple of them nuts off there and this box off we've got access to the carburetor straight away and initially my thoughts are great this is fantastic because there's only these linkages the springs out of the way here so it's just a case of unhooking two linkages and remembering where they go and i always do this in my videos i'm just going to film really close on top of here for anybody who's taken the linkages off a mountfield s481 and this is exactly where they go. So if you can't remember, this is probably the part of the video that you'll uh, probably leave me a comment saying thank you for. So I'll move these around a bit. And I'll do this for my reference as well, just so I can see how it all goes back together. You can see how the linkages hook over and everything like that. That one just goes in there. And that one just hooks through here as well. So this has got an automatic choke system on this lawnmower. And what happens is this actually stays completely closed when you pull the lawnmower over and as it starts running this opens up. So if you're having trouble with your lawnmower starting up it's probably because it doesn't choke. You need to make sure that this actual what I call a butterfly valve, I'm not, never sure if that's correct but I always call it. You need to make sure that that valve isn't open, it's not stuck like that if you're having starting issues. You need to make sure that it's actually closed because that's what actually acts as a choke. The next job I've got to tackle is taking this fuel line off and I'm hoping there's not much in here. I have been recently using a set of forceps to clamp this off but I know I've run this out of fuel so I'm hoping there's very little in here but just in case I put a towel underneath so I should just about be able to grab that this fuel line clip and pull this actual off here. This might take a little bit of getting off because this machine's brand new. This might just take a little bit of getting off here. So I've got some long nose pliers there. I'm just going to give this a little bit of a twist see if we can move that a little bit. Yeah, it does move about actually, that's come looser. I should be able to get my fingers on there and just take this off. And I don't think there should be any fuel in here either. So we'll grab that and that's just slid off there like that. There's no fuel in, as I said I've run this out of petrol as well. So I just want to show you from above here as well, I want to show you these actual linkages, these plastic parts here. You see how they open up? This one kind of pushes against the other one there, it kind of opens the door if you like, like across like that, it pushes it out of the way. I must make sure when I put this back together that actually functions the same way as well. But this one just looks like it's going to go around there and I can just push that and lift it out which I'll do in a minute. And this one here is on like a little clip. This actually like sits underneath here. 
you can just see this actually sits under this plastic clip so I'm going to have to try and push this one out of the clip so when I put it back on the tripod that's what I'm going to show so the first one I'm going to remove is this back one here I'm going to open this up and push this gate open like I said the door kind of opens I'm going to push that open like that and unhook that linkage that's the first one out the next one here looks like it's got a little clip under here so I'm just going to push that clip you see this little clip here I'm going to pull the clip towards me and push this actual linkage away and that, see that was quite easy that's actually just popped out like that I'm going to lift that off and move that out the way and hopefully that stays in one piece which it does which is great so I've got the two linkages out of the way so now I should just simply be able to slide this carburetor off here and take it off and we've got all the whole thing off everything we need to actually service up this carburetor that was really easy to do basically take the two nuts off these two rods here undo the linkages pull the carb off you've got the whole carb off and it's just there in your handy ready to service fantastic now servicing these carburetors on a lot of these lawnmowers mountfields hondas anything that's got like what i call a bowl style carburetor with this bowl on here they're all very similar the first thing you need to do is just get your spanner on here we'll just undo this I'll just slacken that off slightly before as well i've just drained whatever fuel there was left in there there's only a little bit left in it and i always do this over a tub as well might be a little bit windy out here so if it's just apologies for the wind take this off and obviously this is a new lawnmower and there's no problem with this carburetor and the reason you'd need to do this is if you have a fuel leak if the needle is actually sticking or if you're having surging issues and hunting and revving up and down that sort of thing is a, a classic sign of needing a carburetor service so we've got this off this is the carburetor this is the bowl for anybody who doesn't know this is a float here and there's a pin that goes through here and at the back here you'll see just about in there there's a little needle just there above my finger that actually goes up and down and that needs to seal properly and obviously move up and down to let the fuel in and out of the actual engine so what we need to do next is just remove this pin which is why I like to always do this over a tub take that out and then this is uh, kind of a critical bit because if this actual needle's got a little spring over the top of it like this one has just keep your eye on everything just take it out if you can leave the whole thing together do that which is uh, this is this is I'll just say this on camera as well I always mean to say this this is the best case scenario because the needle doesn't need to come off there's a little spring just there and it holds the whole thing together sometimes on the older style ones these all drop off but if you can keep that together then do it keep it together and then it's really a simple case of we'll just take out this main jet from inside here there's actually just get a flat headed screwdriver in there back this main jet out and anyway you can kind of unscrew anything just take the screws out of it and we'll just put a lot of carb spray through here and blow it out with uh, either an air compressor or a can of compressed air obviously this is immaculate because it's a new lawnmower but I thought it was just worth filming a video showing people how to do it because as the years go by there'll be uh, a lot more problems coming up with these one thing to mention as well and I failed doing this on a, a recent video is this actual rubber seal here that actually seals the bowl on here if you get carb spray on that sometimes it actually gets larger and you can't get that back on and if you find if you've got an old, older lawnmower you'll find that this is actually falls out with the actual bowl you can see how easy that came out don't get any carb spray on that just put that separate put that to one side and I'm going to get a flat headed screwdriver here put it down this little hole here I don't know if that was a car or a motorbike leave me a comment if you know what it was anyway um, you just back this out of here you need a thin flat headed screwdriver so it drops down this hole and this is the uh, the cause of kind of 90% of running problems on lawnmowers on any lawnmower really it's just having a blocked up carburetor so hopefully that'll drop out you can see that part drops out there this should have a tiny little hole in which of course it has because it's brand new nice and clean that drops out of there and then there's a second part as well which drops out and this is the most troublesome part you'll find this is what I call uh, like a mouse's flute or a little recorder for someone from Sylvanian families I always think that, I don't know why it just makes me smile anyway but it's, uh, it's kind of a little brass part it's got tiny little holes in like a recorder would have and these tiny little holes need to be immaculately clean if you have any of these blocks up you'll have uh, running issues with your lawnmower such as surging and stalling and not starting as well so make sure all these parts are clean all the tiny little holes in this the actual little hole in here and if there's anything else you can unscrew on the carburetor off the top of it and it doesn't look like there is on this particularly then just back all the screws out and spray some carb spray through blow it through with a can of compressed air or an air compressor and basically just put back together the parts that I've just taken out and it's as simple as that 
for anybody who's never done this before, I normally just get myself some of this um, carb spray cleaner. It can be any brand. I found this to work quite well, this STP um, carb spray cleaner. I list a lot of these things that I use regularly on the website. I actually have my own website, which is repairlawnmowersforprofit.com. And you'll find on the homepage there, there's an actual link to a parts store. So if you're looking to purchase anything to repair your lawnmower, you'd be doing me a massive favour and supporting the channel if you looked on there just to see if I've got the parts that you might need. So what you'd normally do now is spray all this out with some carb spray and blow it out with some compressed air. I obviously don't need to do that so I'm going to reassemble this carburetor as if I've done all that. And to do this, this actual brass part here, the thinnest part goes in here. You can drop this back in soft like that. Make sure it goes all the way in and we're going to get this actual brass part here as well with a little hole in, make sure this is this way around so you can get the flat headed screwdriver actually in there when you want to tighten this back up. So we'll drop that back in as well, make sure that drops in nice and evenly. You don't want to be cross headed in anything. And a good rule is that it should always kind of drop down if you just wiggle it about like that. Next thing we need to do is just get our screwdriver again, tighten this back up. And if you clean these parts off on the carburetor, you, you really will eliminate a lot of the running problems that you may have been having. And as I've said, it's only been really a couple of nuts to take off there and um, pull the air filter box off. A couple of uh, governor rods or adjusting rods, whatever you want to call them. And that's it. Next thing to do is make sure this float and this needle goes back on here. That just drops in there, you have to make sure this needle drops down the hole, like that. You can see how that drops in there. And there's no setting anything on these, it should all be exactly as it is. There's no real tang to alter on there where you alter the height of the float, like on the older ones. Put the pin back in like this and push this back through. You can see there, one thing you must check, is you must check that this actual needle here moves up and down. If it's sticking, what you'll find is you'll have a like a, a leak on the carb when you put it back together. You'll find that it doesn't seal properly and you actually get actual fuel running out of the carburetor and actually have a fuel leak. So we'll do that. Next thing we're going to do is put the bowl back on. You can see here where the actual carb fitted on. You can see where the actual fuel line connected. Now these have a drain bolt in the bottom here which is there. You can see here you can actually use that as a drain bolt. What I like to do is put that part to the front like that. In fact somebody's marked that off from factory from new and that's a good idea because when it's back on the lawnmower if you want to use that it gives you better access to get in and drain any old fuel out the carburetor so we'll get that and then make sure you've got your actual bolt that goes in the bottom this should always have this like, rubber seal on this rubber washer on the bottom to stop it leaking put that in and always do this as carefully as you can and one thing I must remember to do before I put that back on if we must put this uh, bowl gasket back on there nearly forgot that would have been good so I'll pop that in there make sure that's nice and even make sure it's sat down there right it is now I'll put that on there put that to the front like that I was just about to explain that when you put these on here these are really easy to cross thread so just put that on really carefully hand tight make sure all the threads are working properly as you can see there I kind of go backwards and forwards a few times first line everything up, have a look for the actual seal around here, make sure it's not popping out the edge which is why it's important not to get any carb spray on that and I'm just going to tighten this back up make sure you don't cross thread anything because if you want one of these parts it's probably just as expensive as buying a carb especially on a, a different lawnmower like a Tecumseh but with that tightened back up what I normally do shake this and listen Hopefully you can hear the float going up and down, and if the float's going up and down, hopefully the needle's going up and down. And that's all you need to do to service the carburetor on a Mountfield S481 petrol lawnmower. So let's put this back on, and I'll show you a few of the things as we go. The next thing we need to do is refit this carburetor. It's actually uh, something's fallen off here. This little part has actually fallen off there. I need to put that back on as well, this gasket. I'll have a look back on the video clips and make sure that goes back on. But the fun part normally is when you can't quite remember which linkage went where. So just as a reminder, this one here, which has got all these kind of kinks along here, like Ray Davis, remember the kinks, yeah? That one goes right to the front here, and this one goes at the back. So I'm just gonna hook that one back on. Make sure that this opens this door, like I said, which pushes past it. So I'm gonna hook that one back on there. That should go back in. Make sure everything's moving as it should be, which it is. This is a really easy setup to do. And this one, let's try and remember where that went. That went down there, but then this clip pushed over like that as well. So when I push this back and move everything about, everything should move exactly as it did before. This is a really good design. I really like this setup as well. 
and uh, a lot of these older style mount feels and different even Hondas and everything you used to get you used to have little springs in here and the tiny little springs tended not to work very well but this one I think it's a good idea to remember this kind of opens the door and that's the two actual linkages back in so one thing I don't like is this gasket that fell off before you can see where this goes you probably noticed it earlier in the video I've actually just put this back on here and to do that I've got some display mount and I've just sprayed it in the bottom of this tub just so it's a tiny little bit tacky and I just touched it onto it and I can just touch it back on there and it's kind of just hanging on there there's only a little bit on but it's just enough to hold that in place but I don't really like the fact that that just falls off as easy as that I don't think that uh, is a particularly good design but just be aware of it when you take it off and if it's uh, all stuck together if the lawnmower's a bit older I'd imagine that it's, it's been on a bit longer it probably just stays in position but one thing to note is if you can't get it running right make sure you've actually got this gasket on the carburetor the next thing I normally do before putting this back together if the actual fuel tank has got some fuel in and this one hasn't the best thing you can do before you put the air filter box on is just actually put this fuel line back on here push this back on and make sure you've got no leaks actually out the bottom of the carburetor as well I just noticed as well a little bit of fuel came out of there as well which you weren't expecting out the fuel line so I'm just going to clean that off the paintwork and keep that nice and tidy as well I'm not actually sure if Mountfield want me to return this lawnmower or if I'm going to get to keep it so leave me a comment in the comments section if you were uh, if you think I should be able to keep this lawnmower and film a few more vids on it because I really do quite like this and I've actually been out and cut some local uh, wasteland on the review video as well so all the videos I've done on this, I've probably mentioned this before, but they're all underneath in a playlist in the description of this. So I've got that cleaned off, there's no petrol left on there. Let's put this air filter box back on. One thing I nearly forgot then as well, this actual fuel clip here. This here, see this part? This needs just pushing back on here. If you grab hold of that and slide it, you must make sure that that is hooked on there. And that'll hold this actual fuel pipe in place there onto the carburetor as well. I just want to show you as well on this air filter box where the breather pipe is here it actually came off actually on the air filter box sometimes it might be stuck if it's stuck it's in this part here so I need to make sure I get this actual air filter actual breather back in there so what I might do is I might put that in there first and then attach it to the carburetor but one thing I said I would look at was this actual lead here because this lead goes onto this spark plug here and pushes on but this actually sort of touches the top of this exhaust cover now I presume that the cover doesn't get too hot but I mean it's obviously the exhaust gets incredibly hot behind it and I don't really like how near to the actual exhaust that actual spark plug lead is I'm not sure if there's anything I can do to put that back a little bit differently maybe with the cover on I can lay it across that way and make sure nothing's catching here as well but seems a little bit close maybe if it just points straight up when I put the cover back on I can't help but think it's going to push it down and push it against this so I'm going to keep an eye on this over the next few times I use it make sure that this doesn't get too hot and I'm not having any issues with this there is actually like a protective heat shield on this as well but I don't really want that at all anywhere near that if I can help it so just to be completely honest on, on the video as well something I didn't think about was that the back of the air filter box is actually a cutout for this actual gasket here so that that should actually go in this actual cutout that should have come off on the back of the air filter box it's probably just because it's new that that's happened I don't normally uh, see a problem with that but that actual gasket there if you can't get it in the right position actually comes off here so you want to put that back on there so I'm actually going to take that off there I thought that was a bit of a strange way of doing it and I'm actually going to refit that inside this actual little cutout section here on the back of the air filter box that way when I actually put this back together I know it can't be in the wrong position as I said earlier, never done one of these before and I always do these videos like this because these are the problems that you might find that uh, you come across as well when you purchase this lawnmower and you want to do some servicing as well. So now I've worked that out properly and I've got that back in there. I'm going to actually leave that breather pipe on and I'm going to do it that way So that's the way it came off. That actually might be a better way of doing it. I don't know why I've always kind of done it the other way on. Probably because it normally falls off in this part here. But let's put that back on here. We've got to make sure these two parts go through here. And this can't possibly be in the wrong place if I do it that way. So I'm going to push that in at the top. I'm going to just push that over there as well. Make sure this air filter pipe at the top, this breather pipe I should say, pushes in nicely there. And also, before you put anything back together and screw everything back together, make sure all these linkages and all the actual parts on top of the cab move exactly as they should. This is actually a really nice design. The one thing I didn't like was something actually that I'd done wrong. And that was actually the gasket which goes on the back of the air filter. But really it's a good design. There's 
two sort of governor rods that go across the top really easy to unhook as well and get off and really quick to do as well so let's just put that back on and we'll just use some common sense when tightening these up as well and we'll just tighten these back up evenly and everything should be sealed nicely back between the carburetor and the engine as well so I'm going to go like that and I'm going to leave that like that the actual breather pipe's gone in nicer there and everything's uh, nice and lined up one guidance there as well is just how much the threads are sticking out at the other side of these nuts as well we'll grab this brand new clean air filter which is nice to see I always like to see them nice and clean like that this goes in here everything must go on the inside like it was before and then this actual air filter box has a little catches on the bottom there's three catches on the bottom there and if you can't get in because of this bar to hook that on there's a single point height adjuster on this actual uh, lawnmower so if you move the height adjuster out of the way it should drop down a little bit it might give us a little bit more room just to get in and hook this on I'm never quite sure which way to do it but I think that's it yeah We'll put that to the actual lowest height and the air filter box is clipped back on there and that should be the whole carburetor service which is great that's probably taken me no more than really five ten minutes even though i'm filming a video and talking to you so we'll put this back together and i'll test this lawnmower in just a minute um just want to film around here really just for anybody who's bought one of these who's looking for something different um, particularly if something's gone wrong or they're losing a missing a part or losing parts or whatever it might be I'm just going to film underneath the cover while it's off because a lot of people like to see that as I've mentioned before I'm still not convinced about that so I might actually lie that like that but the problem with that is you're obstructing this actual governor here but it moves about okay must make sure everything moves freely including these parts in here and everything looks all right I don't need to check the flywheel key because it's a brand new lawnmower I know it's running okay but if it was kicking back when you pull it over you can take this actual nut off here and look in and actually check the uh, flywheel key. So I'm going to put this back together, we'll drop a bit of petrol in it, make sure it's not leaking and we'll start this lawnmower up and still make sure that it runs okay. Well let's grab this plastic shroud here that went on it before, put that back over the top like that. I'm just going to keep an eye on this actual lead here, you see how it's probably probably can't see it's just pressing down on there that is going to have to go over that side there because there's actually a cut out at this side probably where you can't see where it should go in fact i'll film that for you rather than just standing there telling you where it goes i'll just film it this actually goes in this cut out section here so it does run really close to the exhaust i'm just going to kind of make sure that's out of the way you must make sure that this linkage moves as well because if you press it down on top of it or anything daft like that you'll be obstructing it and it will rev up and down and probably not to run very well at all so we'll put that on put that back on there that's clipped on and then we've got that little part which i don't need yet and we're going to put this recoil cover back on now we'll just slide that back on make sure this is down nice and tightly i suppose i do like that because it ensures that all this is down in the correct position we'll just grab this put this back over the top of here like that in my tray here where i've kept all my little bits before should be able to drop these down, these little holes here, one in each and we'll just tighten those back up. I'm just tightening the last one of these up, I've done the other two, tighten these back up, really easy to put back together. It's uh, pretty well designed this really, I like the separate petrol tank as well. If you ever see a second hand lawnmower where the petrol tank is built into the recoil, I kind of suggest not buying those because what happens is if the, uh, the recoil breaks, you tend to have to buy the whole thing in the petrol tank and it's expensive. Sometimes they have refit kits, but a lot of them that are combined as a tank and the actual recoil I found on the cheaper versions of uh, some lawnmowers that the tanks split really easily as well. So we've got that back together there. I'm going to put this nice looking cover back on the top as well, just to finish this off. Let's just see exactly how that fits there. That just pushes on there. A little clip at the front. Let's put the front one in first, like that. And the back one just presses down like that. And that's the whole thing securely back on and that's the whole thing back together so I'm going to go get myself some petrol to put in this lawnmower because I actually don't have any left I'm going to come back in just a second we'll start this lawnmower and we'll just make sure it still runs okay I've just dropped a bit of fuel in here 
So there's no sign of any leaks. I'm just looking underneath here, making sure nothing's leaking. So I'll put the camera on the tripod and we'll start this lawnmower up, lawnmower up. And don't forget, in the top right hand corner of your screen now, there's actually a link to some other videos I've done on this lawnmower as well. There's actually a full playlist on this of a review and an assembly video of it out of the box and everything like that. So we'll start this lawnmower up, make sure it runs all right, and this carb should be fully serviced. Right, so let's do this. There's no primer on this lawnmower. You just simply uh, basically pull the lever and pull it over and it should start. Great stuff. If you're looking to service the car on a mount field, S481 power drive lawnmower. I hope this video has really helped you out. Please subscribe if you've not done so and give the video a quick like as well if this has just helped you get your mower running again. Hope to see you again sometime soon and uh, thanks for watching. See you next time.